Hey folks, Dan Fro here with your market update for Halloween. It is October 31st. So we're going to talk about uh, some different loan programs today. I, I offer a slew of loan programs. You guys probably don't even know. Half you guys might not even know that I'm a mortgage person. So my name is Dan Frio. I do this report every day to inform you guys what's going on in the markets. I'm trying to teach you guys on real estate, some equity uh, equity positions like buying stocks, bonds, and things like that. So we have stock, uh, stock Talk Tuesday. And uh, today I want to go over the economic news that we have, and it's a slew of information coming in right now. We have the PCE, initial jobless claims, uh, right through here. So here's the headlines. Key inflation rate hits 2.1%, uh, right in line with expectations. Jobless numbers, the jobless claims retreat for the third straight week. So this is telling us, okay, the economy might not be so bad. Before we get to the news, I want to go through some programs with you. Okay, so don't turn the dial. I want to show you the programs that we offer. We probably offer a lot of stuff you don't even realize. So again, my name is Dan Frio. I work at ServBank. I'm a loan officer. I'm licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico, and I offer all these programs. The reason why, we're also a broker. I'm set up with over, I think it's 50 lenders right now. So we can offer programs like this, 30-year fixed, adjustable rates, interest only, FHA, VA, USDA, jumbo, conventional, reverses, home ready, home renovations. But there's more. And I put in here, this is all through chat GPT. Um, what other categories are there? Well, there's categories such as non-QM. Those are those are kind of like the subprime of old days, but much better with more skin in the game and better quality of credit and so forth. But what are those programs? Well, they're bank statements, interest only, asset based. So we take your assets. If you have a chunk of money, but don't have a job, we can use it basically in like an asset depletion program for you. There are no doc programs. Uh, there's ex expanded debt ratio programs. We do foreign nationals. I have I actually have a, a borrowers from Turkey uh, moving here and I'm helping them with their loan season loans. And then there is a thing called DSCR. And this is fantastic. If you're an investor out there and have more than you know one or two investment properties, this is the program you've been looking for. So we offer all these things by contacting me in this one application, one credit pool, and we're going to find you a loan with all these 50 lenders as well as ServBank. So let's get to why you're here today. The inflation numbers and the jobs report just came out. Let's go over to Rick Santelli. I, I can go down through the data with you right through here, but let's let Rick take it away. And then as he's going through, I might point these out for you to show you kind of what's going on what he's referencing. Uh, and when he's done, we'll show you the market reactions and what we expect from rates kind of today and tomorrow. Next week, it's, it's all hands off. We're just going to wait for the election to settle down and, and things like that. It could be a, it, the next probably five to six business days, not the weekends, but the business days, they're going to be choppy. So Pick your, pick your positions. So the first thing is, let's get over to Rick Santelli. But we have the PC. Like I said, the PC number came in. This is the number one inflation uh, number that the Federal Reserve monitors came in in line. But let's let Rick tell it to you. He says it with a little more pizzazz than I do. And then when he comes back, I'm going to go through all these numbers with you. So let's take it away, Ricky. Here are the numbers are hitting the wire. Let's start out with the employment cost index. We're expecting a number, you know, just shy of 1%, up eight, nine tenths. And that's exactly what we received, up eight tenths, up eight tenths. And how does that fit in? Up eight tenths is the smallest month over month cost index uh, variable going back to June of 21, June of 21. So that's pretty good. Uh, second quarter of 21. Now, let's look at personal income and spending. There's a lot of categories here. There's seven, so bear with me. On the income side, exactly as expected, up three-tenths of a percent and up three-tenths equates to July. Uh, to find a higher number, you go back to May when it was up half of 1%. Now, let's look at spending, shall we? Spending was a bit on the light side. Last month was the second lowest reading of the year. It popped up a bit, up a half a percent up 0.5. That is really a nice number. And uh, that equals where we were in July to find a higher number. You go to March of this year when it was up seven tenths. Now let's go to real spending, shall we? That's up four tenths. Another nice beat. If we look at the PCE price index month over month, up two tenths, exactly as expected. A little hotter than our one tenth last time. Uh, to find a higher number, you have to go to April of this year. Now let's look at the year over year price index. That came in at exactly 2.1, which was expected, but it is one-tenth smaller than our last look at 2.2. 2.2 in and of itself was the lightest since Dece of 21 when the comp was 1.8, so we remain in that same comp category. Now, let's look at core uh, numbers. On a month-over-month -month core PCE, 
up three tenths, up three tenths month over month. Uh, that actually is the hottest number going back to March of this year. And finally, number seven, core year over year PCE. And that number comes in hotter than expected at 2.7. We we're looking for 2.6, but it equals last month 2.7. And 2.7 actually on the core number, well, if you look at that, that would be the uh, biggest level going back to 2.7. That would be since April when we were hovering at 2.97, rounded up to three. Now, we still have two categories left. Initial jobless claims, 216,000. Uh, that's about 14,000 lighter than expectations. And that is definitely lower than the 228 slightly revised last uh, week. But there's many asterisks here. Uh, many economists, you know, our own uh, favorite Peter Bookfire. There's a lot of noise in this number due to storms. So it's hard to tell if it's getting back onto its proper GPS. And, and I would also put out there that many thought it would actually be higher based on certain effects. So we want to monitor that. And on continuing claims, the metric of 1.8 million now becomes the 21st consecutive week above that level, 1,862,000. That's actually a bit lighter than expectations. And that follows 1,888,000. After all that, how did the market synthesize these numbers? Well, we saw yields in a 10-year move up to 430. Now they're back down to 428, exactly where they were before any of the data hit at all. A two-year more susceptible to potential issues regarding inflation, the Fed, and the strength of the jobs market. Well, it's now at 416. It was 418 prior to the number. So you could actually say, you know, a little bit better news. I'm not sure exactly where they see the better news. Uh, we did see some inflation numbers a little warmer, some subtly cooler, but all in generically, the only surprise really was claims that I'm not sure that really counts. As far as Jim Grant and the vigilantes, I know there's uh, an article in the journal today that the next administration is going to inherit a great economy. I'm not sure about how I would define great, but they're going to inherit a boatload of debt. Joe and the gang, back to you. He's always brutal there with the uh, deficit. And so am I, because it's running out of control. And no matter what, you know, parties in there, you know, which party is going to basically, you know, help it better than the other. Don't know. And that's up to you guys to figure that part out. So that's what we're seeing today so far. Um, he just went through the entire economic calendar that we see right there. So the market reaction is right through here. So what you're seeing right now is the markets, look at all this. You can't see the green behind this, but there's all kind of bumpiness in this. And, and the markets are kind of just, they're like, what do we do? And I, I think I'm just going to sit on the sidelines. I'll give you the data every day going through the election and just let's see how this plays out because even bond traders right now are, are scratching their heads saying, what is going on? And you noticed uh, he also mentioned the the vigilantes. So there's there's a whole bunch of uh, dynamics to move right now, but just focus in on mortgage rates right through here. These Again, these are the top six products people use when they're buying their first house. So if, you, if here's the basics uh, strength of the economy right now. This is updated today based on the news that just came out. So we have the federal funds rate right here. That This is the rate the Federal Reserve controls, still at 475 to 5. They're expecting this to come down a quarter percent at the next meeting. I will check the CME Fed reading tomorrow. The PCE just came in and it's now at 2.1. So that is on the way down from where it was uh, down up here through where we were at about 9% or so. And it's coming down nicely in line. So we're basically one tick off of where the Federal Reserve wants us on the inflation number. Unemployment rate, like he's saying, basically the numbers are stabilized right now, which is, is good. And then we did the GDP, uh, third quarter GDP is 2.8, which is fantastic. You know, look back here, we had a negative 28 in Q2 of 2020. So the economy in general is looking pretty good. Uh, might be, not be the news you want to hear, but the, the overall equity markets, let's see how the markets are reacting right now. Let's go to the overall markets and see what the, the oh, whoa, S&P's tumbling, second straight day, dra dragging it down, Microsoft and Meta. I don't, I haven't come up with their, or haven't looked at their earnings and things that yet, uh, but I'll do that and I'll do that at the closing bell for today. But right now we're seeing equities eh, down 250, S&P down 62, NASDAQ down 300. They're all almost 1% lower. The VIX is, 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 is inching up there. Look right over my head. The VIX, we don't want that over 18. Uh, so that's showing us a little bit of anxiety in the markets. Cryptocurrencies, 71.5. Wow. 
wow, that's crazy. And then oil, oil is up a little bit, but it's still not at that $70 barrel. And why we watch oil is it's, this is a huge piece of inflation. So my name is Dan Frio. Like I said, about a hundred times today in this video, and I apologize. Um, I'm a loan officer. If you'd like to reach out to me or just look at the programs or look how, just look, look at me, um, Google me. You can Google me, Dan Frio, or go to our website, theratupdate.com, and here's a ton of stuff up here for you. The main thing I want you to do is if you're looking to buy that first house, please make sure you use the grant finder. Uh, other than that, click the apply now button if you want to put in your application so I can review it, get back with you, and uh, go over your scenario. Uh, but if you'd rather call, that's what most people do. I encourage you to call in because there's going to be three people answering the phone, only three. So if you have to leave a message, my apologies, but it's me, Alan, and David. So if you even get an, a loan application and has my name on it, Alan Platt or David Pies. We're all on the same team. We're here to help you. So if you'd like to call us, here's our number right there. And if you'd like to email me, there's my email address right there. So thanks so much for watching, guys. God bless. Have a safe afternoon. And for those with kitties out there, don't know if you're watching the closing bell, but I'll be back today at the closing bell, let you guys know how all this mess ended for the day. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.